In this video, I'm not going to sell you a hosting company. In fact, I have zero affiliate programs. I have zero affiliate links in the description. And I believe all of the other videos and all of the other blog posts, they all suck and they're sellouts. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to think like a person who is able to find a successful hosting. Without all the crap, let's crack into it. Number one factor that you guys are going to need is understand the hardware. Minecraft is very demanding on something called single core performance. What I want you guys to do right now is pause this video, go to Google and type in the best single core performance CPUs. The reason I'm not going to mention any specific because every three or four months we have new CPUs on the market. You guys need to be up to date. And then when you are out there looking for your hosting, make sure that they use the most modern and efficient performance CPUs. Number two is the memory. This is up for a long discussion. What I found is the sweet spot between 10 and 12 gigabytes of RAM. You can look if the hosting uses DDR5. These are the fastest memories right now available on the market. If you do find a hosting using DDR5, you are absolute in heaven if they're also using one of the most performant CPUs that you found in the previous step. Obviously, you're going to be paying a premium for this, but if you're smart about monetizing your network, you are going to get that money back. The second point is location. That is very obvious. The further the server is from you or from the vast majority of your players, the more lag you will experience. When I go into the game and I try to break a block in a region where I have no permission to break it, the block is going to do like this. Boom, and it's going to flash, but I'm going to see that flash for about 0.5 seconds. This is really annoying. This is typically caused by a lag, but if there is no lag, if the server is actually performing well, then it is caused by location. What are you going to make sure to have is a server that is as close as possible to where you live or when the vast majority of your players live. Obviously, is the vast majority of players because they are going to be paying the bills. Again, if you optimize the, the, the monetization aspect of the server, these are the players that are going to be funding it. So you want to make sure to serve them at the highest level, provide the best experience. So pick a server that is where the vast majority of players are. The third factor is freedom. Okay, what is the freedom of control and what is the freedom of resources? Even if the hosting uses the most single core performance CPU and it is a shared hosting, they can have 400 other people having 400 other microservers on there, the performance will not be the greatest. If you are just starting out and if you don't want to care about all the other setups, which I'm going to mention in a few minutes, just go with the shared hosting. However, if you want to have more than 100 players, for example, on your network and you're expecting to grow it to a really big number, you may want to consider a dedicated hosting. A dedicated hosting means the computer is just for you. There is no one else sharing the resources. It is only running one microserver and you're going to have access to all of the CPU power. Now, the biggest con is that you probably will need to know how to operate Linux, how to operate Docker, how to install and manage a control panel. There is a Pterodactyl panel, there's multi-craft, there's a bunch of other panels, which I'm not going to cover. Again, I'm not going to sell you anything specific. I want to show you guys how to think. So there is just way more stuff to do. Obviously, there is companies who offer a concierge service, done for you service for a premium price, or you can simply go to Fiverr and hire someone off of there, or you can simply go to spigotmc.org or buildbybit.com and just hire someone from there. But of course, you have to make sure that they are good, not just a good talker, but actually good doer. That brings me to the final, the fourth point is the support. I do not buy into the 24 seven support because there has been many cases where these hostings that claim 24 seven support go to Philippines, they go to India, they hire people for extremely cheap prices that have no idea about Minecraft, no idea about actually anything that you want to ask them. And they just type the question into Google, they type it into chat GPT, and they provide you with a below average answer, which you could have looked up yourself within the same amount of time. That is not good. I believe that is very unethical and I would much rather choose a hosting company that does not provide 24 seven low quality support, but provides say eight hours times five days a week, really high quality support with people that actually run microservice with people that actually know the stuff that they're selling and they can really, really help you when you are in need. Now, a couple of minor things that I look at when picking a hosting. 
Number one, pricing. The reason is minor is that if you understand the hardware, if you understand all the other three factors that I just mentioned, you are going to be able to compare the prices and use your own judgment. Then you will be able to make a reasonable judgment whether the price is too much or whether it is a bargain and you should sign up. Obviously, you have to know what is your budget and then you have to sort of decide between the CPU, between, say, the support, the location, the freedom. If it's a dedicated hosting, depends on your budget. The next is a DDoS protection. Now, many hostings claim that they have DDoS within them. Unfortunately, my experience has been such that is just the very basic level. If you are experiencing DDoS problems or you want to scale your server to hundreds and thousands of players, there is going to be someone who doesn't like you, who is going to go and try to DDoS you. You are going to be able to have dedicated DDoS protection. Again, just go to Google right now, type in Minecraft DDoS protection and you'll be spammed with links to services that probably do a better job than me being a sellout and promoting promoting one of them. And then the final and the third minor factor that I look at is the backups. The backups should be also taken automatically. There should be a big button where you can pick the time of the backup, restore it relatively quickly, and then also they should be retained for a considerable amount of time. I would go with at least three months of backups being saved in the history of your server so that you don't have to install any backup plugin. You can just control the backups with a dedicated part of the hosting. Before we finish this video, I do want to mention do not buy in these discounts. Discounts typically are for only the first month. And then in the small tiny text, it is said it's not $9, it's actually $30 a month after the first month. So make sure to do that. Also, do not buy into the all-in-one installs. They typically limit other features. These hostings may or may not be the greatest. Just overlook it. If you want your network to truly be great and everybody else has access to the same all-in-one install, then how the hell are you going to be having great network? You have to be unique, and the way you are going to be unique is by putting your own unique work into it, not by clicking a button that will install you a pre-made prison server. This is not how you be will become ever successful because everybody else has access to the same setup. So do not look at all in one install or any other automatic features. Just check out the hardware, check out, pick a server that is close to the vast majority of your user base, decide between a shared and a dedicated hosting. Look at the support, look at the pricing, DDoS options and backups and you'll be good to go. Now, what I want you to do is click on my profile, give it a subscribe and check out all the other videos that we have here. These are completely for free and I guarantee these will help you building an amazing micro networks. I have Minecraft plugin tutorials. We have over 25 episodes right now that are being dripped. So three times a week, I release new videos on how to actually build and scale a micro network. Again, completely for free. And I'll see you guys in the other videos. Thank you and take care.